Calvary, the rubber on his left spoke. That's rubber R U B B. So so now I'm picturing a sentient used condom being crucified yeah. beside Jesus. And I'm I gotta say I'm down with this religion. No, yeah, right, right. Yeah, the no. little the, the the opening would be the mouth while he's talking. Yeah, right. Like a, a tapeworm. <laughs> God awful movie. Movie movie. Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because you'd probably notice if we didn't. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm back, baby, and I've never felt better. (laughs) And we're also excited to welcome to the show YouTube's very own Vice Rhino joining us for the first time. Vice, welcome to God Awful Movies. Thank you, Noah. Thank you so much. This this made me happy. I'm so happy about this terrible, terrible movie. Yeah, well, so no, we should point out that we said at the end of last week's episode that we were going to be watching Greg Locke's In Jesus's Name. Unfortunately, that was removed from YouTube, not officially for hate speech, but, you know, they didn't give an official reason. I got, <laughs> I got excited about that. I was like, all right, Greg Locke shit. Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty fired up myself. It's not often that a link disappears from our calendar, and so does the account that shared it. (laughs) (laughs) I actually downloaded this one just in case. Yeah, smart. Oh, well, yeah. Smart. There you go. Yeah, we found a pretty decent substitute. So tell us, Veist, what will we be breaking down today? Well, our eardrums, mostly. We watched (laughs) Battle of the Spirit and Power of God, and now I'm convinced that my speakers are mad at me for making them play the audio from this movie. Ooh, that's a lot of rattle. That's a lot of rattle right there. Oh. The microphone clipping is a character in the movie. Yeah, it's the, the main most prominent character. one. Yeah. It's, it's the deus ex machina. It <laughs> saves them every time they get in trouble. Right, yeah, really. So, Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved the Vultures of Horror series, but it's complex and intertwining plot was too hard for you to follow, <laughs> you will love this afterlife punishment of a movie. Ooh, there, this was a long There one. are <laughs> screensavers with more variety than this film. <laughs> I also have to point something out because if you're not familiar with Nollywood, that's films made in Nigeria, most Nollywood films, especially the Christian ones, are four to six hours long. So the fact that I managed to find one that was just 90 minutes of the same scene over and over again, (laughs) a miracle unto itself. (laughs) Yeah, it was funny because like at the beginning I was going like, yeah, it's been too long. Why don't we spend more time in Nollywood? And then by the end of it, I'm like, you know, I remember now why it is that we didn't. (sighs) All right. So is there uh, anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Ooh, ooh, best worst writer exploring his newfound fetish. <laughs> this whole movie just seems like it was written by a guy who just figured out that he's really into nuns and he's experimenting <laughs> with combining his nun fetish yes. with other fetishes to see if it works for him. Yeah. Yeah. If when I hit play on this movie, a little demon had appeared and been like, do you want to watch a nun pee? I would have been pretty sure they were making stuff up for this film. But no nope. spoilers, Eli. Come on. I know. I know. I know. I know. That's a, that's a big, I ordered a nun costume for my partner while watching this. I, I get it. I get it. So I, I'm kind of stealing the easy one here. I'm going with best worst magical combat. Right. So oh the, the God, laser yeah. fight, the lightning fight, lather, rinse, repeat of this movie is people walk, magical beings appear before them. They get into a, a laser fight and then they scream, sing about Jesus just over and over again. And the magical combat in this, it's like watching five year olds, right? Just imagination fight. Yes. <laughs> it's a, they, down to the point where they, yeah, they literally go fireball, fireball. <laughs> <laughs> I currently live in a household with five children in it. Um, Mm. Yes, that holds up. Absolutely. (laughs) There's so many moments, so many moments where I'm just like, hey, I've seen a five-year-old do that like yesterday. (laughs) Yeah, I think this is an insult to the five children in your house. I feel like if you show them this movie, they'd be like, all right, they need to commit more. (laughs) I'm going to go with best worst last minute plot. Okay. As Noah mentioned, this is the same scene over and over and over again, except for I'm going to say 
47 seconds before the end of the movie. <laughs> yes. When someone runs to a character we've never met to deliver a plot that we've never heard of. Yes. And it so never yes. gets resolved. Right. Yeah, someone we've never met runs to someone else we've never met. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. I have a few cultural sensitivity guidelines that I need to go over with Eli, so we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back in a flash with all the repetition that is Battle of the Spirit and Power of God. Holy Ghost fire! <laughs> <laughs> and thanks so much for coming on the show, Justin. No problem, no problem. Where's Eli? He did the intro and then just kind of ran off. Yeah, uh, he said he had to get ready for something, but he wouldn't tell me what it was. Oh, sheesh, here it do. Eli, what are you doing? What, why are you dressed like that? I would also like to know that. Uh, Noah, because we're on YouTube now, we're reaching the kids on this episode. No cap, dab it. No, dab. no, no, Eli, Justin is on YouTube. We're, we're an audio, we're a podcast. Okay, first of all, his name is Viced. Calling him Justin is like dead naming a trans person. Just so you know. Definitely not like that. Not not like that at all. And two, you don't understand. Vice is a YouTuber. He's connected. His YouTube goes to TikTok. His TikTok goes to SoundCloud. His SoundCloud goes to a course. He's teaching on being your own boss by owning vending machines. And now that we're in his network, we're going to go as viral as a white lady being arrested on an airplane. Do you understand? N none of that. No, but but if our listeners do enjoy skeptical YouTube, they can check out J Vice Rhino's channel on YouTube. Uh, he does response to crazy creationism, dump, debunk some stuff. And, and his content is, is really excellent. Oh, thanks, Noah. So you're, you're not going to teach us how to Swifty? Eli, do you, do you know what a Swifty is? I assumed it was a household object you turned into drugs. Okay. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on our main character, Paul the Holy Man. He's on his knees in the scrub, passionately beseeching God. Yep. Yeah, he's he's not just praying, though. He's telling God what the Bible says in case God forgot, I guess. Yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. In case God forgot how his own book opened. He's like, I just want to remind you, it was your word that started the, the universe. I love the idea of God sitting up there going like, yeah, man, I fucking know. I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's doing like that thing that priests do uh, where they say the uh sound uh, after they're talking. Uh. Yeah. And he's already got a pretty heavy Nigerian accent. So I wrote in my notes, okay, I feel like doing a vocal bit while you have an accent is cheating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it took me a, a long time to realize that he was talking about God's word and not God's water. Yeah, I had, yes, to look, I, I had to look up the Bible verses to get that. And like, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember a Bible verse saying in the beginning was the water. Yeah, right. Right. Is this is, is this about God's pee? I mean, pee features heavily in this movie. So That's it maybe. sure does. Yeah. And then just as you're about to say to yourself, Eli, I don't know that this is worth watching. Maybe we shouldn't do an episode on this. Satan appears and starts to choke the fuck out of him. <laughs> <laughs> and, he's, and he's sticking his tongue out like he's a four-year-old pretending to die. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, exactly. And when Eli says Satan, don't imagine like somebody in a Satan costume. It's just some dude in red pants and a jacket with little horns on. That's <laughs> no, it, Satan. It, it looks, his devil costume looks like something he got from Value Village for Halloween, but like <laughs> not from their Halloween <laughs> section, just no. called together from random shit that they, yeah. from their used clothes section. Not even clearance bin. We're talking the guy was walking out to the dumpster with a trash bag <laughs> full of post clearance items. And this devil costume guy was like, wait a second. What if I could save you walking eight more feet to that dumpster? <laughs> <laughs> Just handing that to me. I literally wrote in my notes at this point. You were sitting there thinking, how am I going to make fun of this? Weren't you? Yep. But that was before Jack muscular devil in the Muppet costume came and choked a guy. <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's accurate. So then we, so that was all a dream though. He wakes up from that dream and now we're going to meet the whole gang. Now, the movie's not going to do you this favor. I'm going to do you this favor and tell you that the plot here is that Paul the Holy Man has gathered this priest named Philip and several nuns, and they're going through a haunted forest trying to exorcise the devil from it. Mm, would we say forest? <laughs> <laughs> they say forest. There's like four <laughs> trees in this entire movie. <laughs> yeah. Scrub? 
Yeah, that, that that's fine. They use the term forest, so I'll grant them that. But yeah, they also keep saying they're out in the wilderness and we can hear traffic in the background. So. Oh, yeah. There, there's one point where the cars honking drown out his sermon. And it's, yeah, the, best, exactly. it's the best audio in the movie. That was a devil. Devil. So, devil yeah, right. Devil like, <laughs> so, yeah. And then, of course, this is also where we introduce the film's main character, the speaker rattle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All while the camera guy is getting slow panning shots up, you're like down one nun's blouse and like mm -hmm. close up on another nun's ass. Yep. Yes. Towards the end of the scene, at one point, one of the nuns like bends over to pray or grab something. Facing away from everybody. Yes. Yeah. She's facing the opposite direction of everybody else and they never explain why. She's not speaking. She's not part of the dialogue, but the cameraman like shoves the speaking characters out of the way so that he can get the outline <laughs> of her underwear. It is very uncomfortable. And then they start singing. Everybody's singing and suddenly get used to that. Right now. I want to be clear when we say they're singing. I don't mean a music number. I mean, they're 40 feet from the camera and three of them kind of know the same song and are singing it. <laughs> but we all have in our notes some variation of scream singing, right? <laughs> because the one guy, Paul, the main guy, he just shouts things. There's nothing melodic about what he's doing. You recognize it's a song just sort of by the rhythm of it more than the tune. Yeah, it's less singing and more trying to be located by a rescue team in song. <laughs> 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 that's that's a perfect description. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And then, as you're thinking to yourself, "Wow, I don't know if there's really enough to make fun of here. I don't know if we should do this movie." Lightning strikes, and three people appear dressed like bad guys from <laughs> Temple of Doom. Lightning bad guys appear. The lightning effects are like this scene has the best effects of any scene in the movie. And it looks bad for 1960s Star Trek. Yes. Oh, absolutely. No, there is no time period in which you would say that was great special effects guys. <laughs> like it, it looks like I made it with a pirated copy of After Effects in grade 10 yeah, yeah I, I said they ran out of free uses of this TikTok filter at some point I said can, can someone at least teach them how to mask and feather a layer like I promise that's not a sex <laughs> thing or I promise it can be a sex scene if that'll get them to actually do it yeah right <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so the bad guys throw a Raiden attack at them, lightning powers. Paul blocks it with his laser Bible. I am not like, like <laughs> I, you, you think I'm just making shit up to spice this up. That is what's happening in the fucking movie. So many of my notes while I was watching this movie are, I'm very happy I'm making Noah describe what happened. Because <laughs> I just get to be there and like, bah, 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 this is what I thought was funny. But Noah's the one who has to be like, okay, I guess this is the plot I'm leading us all through. <laughs> Paul blocks it with his laser Bible. Absolutely. I love the, my favorite part of this is the, the, all the Christians are yelling fire, fire, but they didn't put in any fire. <laughs> like eventually they do, but every, like the, you can tell that they expect that they're throwing fireballs when they see it later. They had to be so disappointed. <laughs> yeah. After effects guy forgot. What can I say? Yeah, yeah right, exactly. Right. So, but one of the nuns gets knocked over in the lightning attack. I think she's dead now. Mm hmm. Yeah, so this is where I wrote lightning, lasers, cute girl screaming as she falls unconscious. I like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then so like one of the nuns is very upset about the chick dying from the Temple of Doom attack. And then the priests are like, I, I'm going to need you to get the fuck over it and calm the fuck down. OK, we have like 89 more minutes. <laughs> yeah, she's not just upset about it. She's upset about it in the same way as my five year old. When you explain that he can't have pizza for dinner every night. Well, like she, yeah. does a, she, she does the like <laughs> arms drop to the side as she collapses while screaming in a temper tantrum fashion. It's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah this is a real I wanted my sandwich cut into triangles moment. Rather than <laughs> <laughs> I also. This was almost my best worst. They will occasionally just announce Bible verses that have nothing to do with the plot. And they do this for the first time here. He's like, it is the way God says in Joshua, my lair, the name of the Lord is a tower. And I was like, OK, interested to see where you're going with this. Yeah. He is not. He's not going nope. anywhere. No, it does not tie in at all. Not, not even a little. Sequitur. As a matter of fact, in order to distract you from the fact that it doesn't tie in, he just starts yell singing again. <laughs> yes. And oh, no, he doesn't just start yell singing. 
he starts yell singing as, and we haven't mentioned this yet, but we've got like an Italian opera or something playing in the background yes. with lyrics. Mm -hmm. And he's yell singing at the same time as they're playing that. Yes. At full volume. Right, right. He's he's. It's a competitive yell singing <laughs> situation. I have to imagine someone was say anythinging them with this Italian opera while they were recording as some kind of prank or revenge. Yeah, because they're going to do that over and over again. There's two opera songs that they use for this, and one of them actually sounds kind of decent, but the other one is not. No, this is the <laughs> decent one. Oh, oh, okay. All right. So yeah, so the crew walks. Get used to that as my intro. I'm sorry. I got. <laughs> yeah. I have to. I have to start the scene somehow. It's it's Lord of the Rings level of walking. Oh, it's yeah. it's beyond that. Yeah. The movie at this point, by the way, is now being shot through a bush. Yep. Through a through, bush. through a bush, not a tree, because <laughs> they're, they're in a forest. So it's not a tree, but it's through a bush. It's not the tree kind of forest. Oh, you know what? I just real. I just realized that's why they did that. It's because yes. it's supposed to be a forest. <laughs> and the cameraman was like, hey, I got a bunch of good shots of her ass, but it's very clear that you guys aren't in a forest. And he was like, shoot it through a bush. And he was like, I feel like oh, people are okay. just going to know. Yeah. <laughs> so at this point, one of the nuns needs to pee, but she's scared that she'll get attacked by laser wielding Temple of Doom extras. As she's saying she has to go relieve herself, she gets smacked in the face by her habit blowing in the wind. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Is like they, they needed like little they need like little clip weights for their habit shoulder pad thingies, whatever those are called. Be useful. So yeah, so they're like, oh well, you know, she's like, I'm afraid I'll get attacked. And and they're like, okay, well, this other nun will go with you. And they're like, well, she doesn't have a laser Bible, but fine. And she she just she is not happy about having to go watch her pee. Uh uh. She's just like making this grossed out face, like, no, no, I don't want to do that. No, that's disgusting. Yeah, right. No, she gets it everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> so we watch this nun go back to piss. Like we watch an awful yeah, lot no, of No, we we actually watch her piss. Yes. Yep. We, it, like no, like the camera zooms in on her. Like this is this is the writer being like, oh, I've got the nun fetish. I wonder if that'll pair well with the urinating fetish. Yep. <laughs> this guy definitely made an alternate edit of the things that he shot <laughs> and sold that without telling the people who made this. Christian <laughs> yeah, movie. right. But anyway, at this point, we learn that like if you go to piss in the bushes when other nuns don't want to watch you, three sexy black men magically operate beside you. Well, two sexy black men and a sexy black woman, yes. Yeah, so she goes to piss and the Temple of Doom bad guys just bamf their way in. And I love it. The the chick they sent to protect her just runs the fuck away. <laughs> She's like, I'll tell somebody about your plight. <laughs> and then they just stand there yelling at each other. Yep. Like nobody goes back to check on her. They just stand there yelling at each other for a bit. Yeah. Until finally the pissing nun, which I have her in my notes as the pissing nun for the rest of the episode. Me too. She just like comes back and like, opens her mouth at them, but in a way that scares them. Yeah, yeah. She, she's got a kind of a weird smile going on. So I'm like, I, I guess it's two men, but I, I wrote three. So I'm I'm like, is she possessed by the three sexy black men now? Like, did she go for a pee and wind up with three men inside her? <laughs> so they walk some more, right? They all start <laughs> randomly yell singing again. Against the Italian opera. Yeah, again, yeah. Yeah, so here I said, this this is the bad Italian opera song. So I, I was going to ask, is this the good or the bad one? This is, this is the bad one. I have music note. Hey, guys, I just learned how to sing an arpeggio. Want to hear? <laughs> yeah. Actor's response to music note. No, I don't want to hear that. Listen to us yell sing some more instead. <laughs> right, and they're yelling. They're It's like, it's like back when cell phones first came out. Yeah. Right, that's how they're yelling their song. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me now? Good. Yes! Oh, you beat me to it. How dare you? <laughs> so they're walking along and, and suddenly the possessed nun starts going, you know, this is fucking dumb, right? This is this whole fucking thing where we're going through the forest and trying to fight the devil and people are appearing, shooting lightning at us. This sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. And the other nun is like, you know, she's actually got a very good point. <laughs> yeah, I wrote in my notes at this point. Remember, kids, if someone questions why you're wandering the forests and bush of Nigeria singing Jesus songs, it's only because they have a demon inside them. It must be. Yeah. Uh huh. OK, so I, I just I just need to point out that um, the nun that we saw pissing in the last scene is not the nun who gets possessed in this scene. Yep. No, it was a, it was a different it was nun. the other one. So it's like the writer <laughs> forgot that they they set up a possessed nun and so had a different possessed nun start asking to go back. Yeah. 
Yeah. And well, and then the other nun too. So two of the nuns are in white and one of them's in blue. I think she's like the head nun or whatever. So I have her as blue nun through the, through the rest of the film. Boss I also nun. have her as blue nun. Okay. Well that, that works out well. So <laughs> blue nun is like, Oh, you know, these, these white clad nuns, they, they just, they just can't handle it. I'll go home with them just to make sure they get there safe and everything. I, not that I don't want to <laughs> hang out in the evil laser forest with you guys, but, um, I feel like this, this scene is not a scene in the movie. It was just these women trying to bail on this film. <laughs> and the guy was like, I don't know where the start and stop button on the camera is. This is in the movie now. They, they realized that the writer was exploring his fetish and we're like, mm, yeah, I don't right, want to do right, this anymore. Right. <laughs> I should be getting paid more if we're doing a fetish <laughs> film. Also, I love that Apostle Paul's like passive aggressive response is, oh no, you guys can go home. I'll just be here with my close personal friend, the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so they go to leave. But then Paul is like, you know what? Now that I think about it, they're probably possessed by demons. Why else would they not want to hang out in a haunted forest with me? My mom told me that about high school. Yeah. <laughs> So he's like, let's all pray together and see if any of you can't love the name of Jesus in front of us. And then, of course, the one possessed nun can't. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then they have a little fire blazer battle. Yeah. Yep. So the clipping returns to tell us that they're about to win the battle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I have to point this out because it, it haunts me for like three quarters of the movie. It will be explained later. But this is where my notes are filled with curiosity that other apostle guy, the one who isn't Paul, just apparently has a bottle of juice. Are you sure it's juice? I'm pretty sure it's pee. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. I'll spoil it for the audience. It's oil. It's holy oil because there is one moment where he hands it to someone and you see the Goya label. Yeah. But for, I'm going to say, an hour of this movie, he's just holding what appears to be, thank you, Vice, a bottle of human piss that he will not acknowledge. <laughs> yeah, no. And and uh, he like spritzes people with it. He rubs it in their eyes. It's it's It's, it's crazy. Yeah, no, we're doing yeah. him a favor, assuming it's oil. I had it as mango nectar because I was trying to be nice about it. But yeah, looks like <laughs> trying to tease me. <laughs> right. I just assumed given the uh, given the nun pissing fetish thing that it was pee. Yeah. And so and sure. By the way, that character's name is Philip, the the guy in glasses. Thank you. So they finish their ma magic battle. The other nuns, the possessed nuns disappear at the end of this. <laughs> no, only one nun disappears. The other one just kind of vanishes off screen. Yeah, right, right. She will have had disappeared later. So now we've, we're just down to Paul, Philip, and the unnamed blue nun, right? Boss nun. And I have in my notes, of course, for a long time here, what about the other nun? Only one of them disappeared. Where the fuck is she? But yeah. <laughs> where's where's the pissing nun? We need the pissing nun. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. So, and then they're chanting inaudibly, but then another fucking demon appears and they have another laser fight. Yeah, and look, I want to point out that a lot of these laser fights are identical, but the thing that I love about this particular laser fight is that they didn't get their explosion and disappear TikTok filters to work at the same time. <laughs> so very clearly, he throws an explosion at demon person, and they're like, just sort of standing there for a second, and then they disappear yes. because they didn't know how to like <laughs> cross those frames over. It's really fucking funny. I had my notes. Eventually, the effects guy got got back from the bathroom, and everyone disappears <laughs> in a fire. So this is oh yeah. shit. <laughs> this is the first iteration that we get in this movie of what is my favorite line from the movie, mm -hmm. and it is just them yelling, "Holy Ghost fire! Holy Ghost fire!" as they like try to hadouken whatever they're fighting. Yeah, so we will learn eventually that that is the finishing move, right? When they go yes. Holy Ghost fire, the fight's are about to end. Yeah, and also, real quick, at the end of this fight, Paul announces that he is soaked in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Which is a very weird phrase and a weird image. I had that in my notes as well. That's just so, like, I mean, as a former Christian, I kind of get what he's going for, but, like, we never use the word soaked to describe that. Yeah, no. So, <laughs> washed cleansed, whatever. Soaked? No. Yes, soaked <laughs> brings up a much more water parky image than I think yeah. Christ is going for. I am log flumed in the blood. He's, he's just spraying you with blood coming out of his holes. <laughs> the blood of Jesus ruined my phone is not quite the feel I think a vibe. 
a religion should be aiming for. So, yeah. So and and then, you know, everybody's like, man, I sure am not enjoying all these demon attacks. And Paul's like, quit being whiny about it. This is a great teaching opportunity. Let me give you some Bible quotes. So now we, we cut over to a different group of guys that are walking through the forest. I have this group of guys down as team fabric softener. I'll explain why in a minute. Ooh, <laughs> yes, sure. That's, that's appropriate. And and they're walking along, just kind of doing their thing. When suddenly, this is Eli's fucking fetish here. Suddenly, thank you. Mermaids appear, demand <laughs> that they return what they've stolen, and the guys take out a bunch of old paper towel tubes and blow lasers through them. load art lasers. Yeah, <laughs> they have a shofar laser fight with the mermaids, and I think we all agree. <laughs> That when we decided to become podcasters and content creators, this is words we would write down into a Google Doc someday. And <laughs> this was one of my favorite moments of the movie because like the, the guy in red who it turns out is carrying the bottle of fabric softener, mm -hmm. he tries to like defend himself from the mermaid lasers with just a small twig. Yes. And like he, he is he is going for it. Like he's oh. he's like holding it up. Like I could watch the scene of him blocking the lightning bolts from the mermaids with this little twig forever. Like I recorded that scene and I put it as like the motion background on my phone. Yes. It's just, like if if anyone in this movie was going for an Academy Award, it was that <laughs> man in this It moment. was Kool-Aid Man. Yeah, I call him Kool-Aid Man in my okay. notes because right. he's by far the fattest person in the movie and he's wearing all red. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I have him as red because I didn't want to fetch him. But yeah, right, right. All right, well. Uh, so, <laughs> so, but the mermaids are like, give us back what you owe. Cause they, they're, they're whipping their asses in the magic battle. They all get knocked over and red is about to pull out his, his bottle of fucking fabric softener that's going to be the MacGuffin for two-thirds of this film <laughs> when it just so happens that Paul, Philip, and Blue Nun walk by. And that's always awkward when you're getting your ass kicked in a magic fight by mermaids and somebody you know walks by. <laughs> oh, so. Uh, I mean, we've all been there, right? Where you fall down and then someone's got to make a big deal to be like, are you okay? And you're like, well, I'm kind of okay. Like, You got to pretend you're okay sooner than you are and you're losing a shofar fight to mermaids. <laughs> well, so my my question here is like, it's, it's unclear in the movie, but like, are these guys supposed to have well, okay, maybe I'm spoiling the end of the scene here, but like, are they supposed to have died and Philip brings them back to life or Paul brings them back to life? Or are they supposed to just like have been injured and he heals them? Great question. One of the many mysteries that this plot leaves unresolved for part two. <laughs> I felt the same way. You know how when you watch Tenet with the director's commentary, he's talking about how like that's going to interweave with other movies. That's how I felt watching Battle in the Spirit and the Power of God. Is I was like, I know once the sequel and the three equal comes out, it's all going to come yeah. together. We're going to really get to know Robert Pattinson. So, so but Philip and Paul and the Blue Nun join in the magic fight on the side of Team Fabric Softener. So they take down the mermaids. They either resurrect or just heal. All the guys who'd fallen in the fight before. And, they, and Red was the only guy that was still standing when they showed up, right? So they resurrect everybody else. So at, at this point, we should probably mention that there's one guy that has a sleeve with a logo on it that appears to say bitch. Yes. It, okay, thank you. I will call him bitch sleeves for the rest of the movie. Okay. Because he very yeah. clearly is just wearing like a soccer jersey that has bitch on either sleeve. Well, I, I have him as bitch guy. <laughs> Which like now I you do see it closer in another scene where it's it's actually B I T C P. Oh, is it really? But it definitely looks like bitch in most scenes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and uh, I also I I have a I have a theory about this guy. So um, his pants also say Fitch on them. So I'm wondering if this guy was just messing with them and wearing as much clothing as he could that would look like it says bitch at first glance just to see if anyone would notice. Oh, interesting. Because, yeah, because I saw that in y'all's notes and I'm like, guys, that's Fitch. It says Fitch on his pant. Like, what the hell are you? Oh, my God. It does. <laughs> 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 so, OK, so now but now Team Fabric Softener and, and I call him that, of course, because the bottle that they go to give the mermaids looks like a bottle of Fabric Softener. We're going to find out later that it's the water of life that they've stolen from the mermaids. But anyway, they have now joined with Paul and Philip and Blue Nun. And they're setting off with them on their mission to conquer the evil spirits in the treeless forest. Maybe that's it. Maybe the evil spirits stole all the trees and they're Maybe. trying to get them back. <laughs> that's more sense than any of the movie makes. So sure, why not? Yeah. yeah. Oh. 
But Paul explains if they want to join his fight, you got to be Christian. And so he starts talking about how great it is to be Christian. <laughs> I, I love that in my notes, as he was saying this, he was like, if we're going to conquer the spirits of the forest, you have to do one thing. And I wrote in my notes, is it except Jesus? It's except Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Red has this great line here. He goes, you know, he's like, it's going to be very dangerous to fight the evil spirits. So you got to be a Christian. And Red says, the role was called in the school of fear and our names were marked absent. And I'm like, fuck what? yeah, Red. <laughs> That's a great line. That's a it fantastic is. line. I love it. It's beautiful. It was so weird because it's right in the middle of all of this just fucking nonsense. And you're like, yes. all right, man, stand it out. <laughs> it's like that. You know, the thing about like random slamming on typewriters and eventually you'd make the words of Shakespeare. <laughs> I think we saw one line of that take place inside this movie. <laughs> so. Yeah. So I, I, at this point, I'm trying to figure out the plot of this movie. Now, they kind of clear up what they meant the plot to be in the last scene of the movie. But like at this point, I'm like, I think these guys were like serving a different God, like a not Christian God. And they, they say his name a bunch of times, like so and so failed us. And I'm like, yeah, well, I can't tell what they're saying here. But um, and by the way, listener, it is not shock. Rakiki. Like so they're serving that guy who they were supposed to get the water of life for him. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so now most of them are Christian, right? Red decides to be Christian yes. and Fitch decides to be Christian. And the guy in the wife beater decides, I, I've, I've got him down his white shirt because calling him a wife beater seems more of an accusation than a nickname, right? So <laughs> I, I had him as sexy tank top man because he okay, is. Yeah. I also have him as sexy tank top man. Yes, he is. Yeah. He's delicious. I, that he is. So, yeah, so tank top. Red and Fitch are all ready to join. But the dude in the pink shirt is like, man, this Christianity shit is nonsense. I don't want to do that. He says, and this is what both me and the and the closed captioning heard, that they were supposed to get another horse of power. And if they become <laughs> Christian, they won't. Yeah. So Paul interrupts their argument about this to scream sing some more. Yeah, he scream sings at them. This is also where the three who are Christian, he's like, well, okay, so you three are Christian. They're like, yeah, no, we're Christian. He's like, I think you should kneel. And we get to watch in real time as these three actors who did not agree to kneel be like, sorry, what? <laughs> he's like, yeah, if you're Christian, you would kneel right now. And that's what you just said. And the three actors are like, mm-hmm, cool. Yeah. And then they kneel and they point their faces upwards to the sky while Father Philip is standing right in front of them, making a motion with his hand as if he's jerking off an invisible person who's standing there right in front of them. So yep. I'm like, is, is Jesus about to come inside these gentlemen? Yeah, right. Now, everybody do this with their hands. Yeah. So, <laughs> and as Paul was like saying the making them Christian words, Fitch starts jumping up and dancing around and he passes out. This is supposed to be, I guess, ecstatic dancing. We all thought that he died. Right, that he had like an allergic reaction yeah. to Christianity. I thought he had a seizure because, like, every but everybody's ignoring him. So I'm like, does this guy just have seizures sometimes? So this is just a normal occurrence for these guys, I guess, or that's just how some people take the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if we if we could go back a moment, there's one moment in the closed captioning that you seem to have missed is when he's talking to them about Jesus. The closed captioning was convinced that he says, when Jesus was on the cross at Calvary, the rubber on his left spoke. <laughs> That's rubber R U B D. So, so now I'm picturing a sentient used condom being crucified yeah. beside Jesus, <laughs> and I'm, I gotta say I'm down with this religion. No, yeah, right, right. Yeah, the no. little the 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 opening would be the mouth while he's talking. Yeah, right. Like a tapeworm. <laughs> so they so they go to leave. Right, Fitch is fine. They go to leave, but before they can. Two, the two white-robed nuns from before appear. The pissing nun is back. I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah. pissing nun is back along with the other one and a lady in stripes. And they start singing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Paul's like, all right, I'll, I'll sing with you. I'll see how this plays out. But of course, it ends in a big magic fight with a lightning Bible. <laughs> okay. Now, guys, I know it's a little late to ask this, but is it too late to tell Heath that we're reviewing Pitch Perfect <laughs> and then we send him this movie instead? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't listen to the shows he's not on. Yeah, I think we're fine. I think we're good. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so so they fight with the laser Bible again. They yell, Holy Ghost fire. By the end of it, everybody's been knocked out except for Paul and Philip. And, and Philip runs around spritzing everybody with his little urine bottle because he's got a little spray nozzle on it now. 
Yeah, yeah, like, like like you would do with a cat that was being naughty, right? He's just running around <laughs> doing that, and then uh, it was. But they they revive everyone except Pink Shirt, who cannot be brought back from the dead because he did not accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior earlier in the scene. Very sad. I don't think we mentioned this yet, but. Um... In the last scene, when they got into their argument, uh, sexy tank top guy kept calling him crazy. And uh, Eli had in his notes as if crazy was his name. And I'm, I'm like, no, there's no way this this character's name is crazy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But in this scene, as he's dying, they're all like yelling, oh, crazy, no, crazy, no. He's in the credits as crazy. I watched the credits yeah. to verify that. That is the character's name is crazy. Crazy is his name. Yep. Yep. Before I knew Eli, my name, my nickname was everybody just called me. It crazy. was crazy. It, it was. was. It at least involved was. the word crazy. And then you met Eli and he upstaged you. So he yeah, right, right. And I really <laughs> couldn't, I could no longer take any claim to that. All Bear right. the mantle. Well, I'll tell you what, they just killed off the only character I like. So I need a minute to recover. But we're going to be back <laughs> in a flash with even more Battle of the Spirit and Power of God. All right, everyone, welcome to the first writer's meeting for the battle of the spirit and the power of God. Wait, why Why don't we have Nigerian accents? I think you know why we don't have yes, Nigerian Some of us accents, have to be on the man. show next week, too, bro. Anyways, as you know, Mr. Schmanderson says we can't wander around his property screaming Jesus songs anymore. So sad. That's unfair. Yeah, but, but I have a solution. I told him that we're going to make a movie where we walk around his backyard yelling Jesus songs. Sweet. That's amazing. And he went for it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to feature the latest in CGI. Well, hold on. Hold on. Can we really afford computer generated images? Oh, no, this is the other CGI. What's the other CGI? Uh, Craig generated images. Hold on. Is is Craig the guy at the library with Spider-Man movie maker? He is, yes. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open on more walking, more walking. Now, we should point out here that this is actually three episodes of a TV show that have been sort of smooshed together into a 90-minute movie. Yes. Now, they've tried to fool us into thinking it's one continuous movie, but they weren't trying hard enough to, like, Remove the lingering credits from the, the opening, opening scene credits. of this part. <laughs> I don't know. I feel. I feel like maybe maybe this was a four episode series and we missed episode one. Ooh. Well, okay, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, this is where I noticed that they actually had a guy listed as their sound guy, Mike Linus. It's his fault. Yes. Yeah. We found the worst sound guy in the world, everybody. <laughs> it's Mike Linus. Somebody was okay putting their name on saying, right? hey, I did this. Or maybe that maybe Mike Linus was just some guy that they hated, right? Like maybe yes, he exactly. had nothing to do with it. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> tell him that Mark Linus did the sound. Yeah. That, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I also just want to say all the names in this credits felt like some kind of willpower test. Right, they were like, "You sure you don't want to make fun of these names, Eli? Okay. <laughs> Are you sure?" <laughs> so this guy's name is just seven numbers. You sure you don't want to <laughs> do a joke about it? And they, they actually they walk so long that like the credits run out and the song that they use for the intro runs out. So they loop the song back around and yep. start it from the beginning again because you know, heaven forbid, we cut that shot of them doing nothing but walking through a gulch. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Oh, well, I guess we'll have to each help everyone individually back out of this ravine and watch that. Yeah. So, but eventually they all stop walking and they have to, they're like crying to Paul about how awful this has been, right? And that they don't like doing this. Well, sexy tan talk guy and bitch guy are cuddling together. Yep, they are cuddling in the background. They, they get a nice little cuddle in. Fitch is always cuddling. Yeah, he was cuddling with Red in that last scene, yeah. And this is where they they accidentally discuss the flaw to the plot of this movie because he's like, yeah, no, we had some nuns with us earlier, but they got possessed by demons. And one of the the hoodlum characters is like, wait, weren't they Christians? And you watch the actor be like, (laughs) yeah, no, they what they didn't. They didn't believe in Jesus hard enough. They started to doubt. They didn't clip their microphones enough. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and this is, by the way, the point in the video where the words and the lips stopped matching up for me. Yeah, as well. Well, 
And Sexy Tank Top Guy has this whole long speech that he gives, but we can't hear what he's saying. Like, no. he's the only guy that doesn't clip his microphone and he talks too quietly for them. And like, mm -hmm. the, even the subtitles, the subtitles gave up on this. They yep. had his lines listed as music. <laughs> yeah. Because the opera in the background is still going. Yeah. No, it's like, imagine if like, the Kenny bit in South Park was an accident in miking instead of a, <laughs> a running bit. <laughs> yes, exactly, that was yeah. this guy's list because he does that like three different times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm doing a find and replace for sexy tank talk guy and calling him Kenny from now on. Okay, there so, you go. Excellent. So, but Paul tells him they got to keep the faith, otherwise, you know, they'll get taken away and turned into bad guys like the nuns did. This is the first time I noticed the highway traffic noise in the background of this remote forest there is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that car blasting its horn was way more pleasant to listen to than these guys yelling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I, I wrote my notes like, I really need another magic fight right about now, guys. And then there's another magic fight. They go to leave. And yeah. damn it, if the mermaids don't attack again. This is this movie is you know how they have that machine they can hook you up to and they notice when your brain is falling asleep and they like flash an image in front of you. <laughs> this movie does that. Wait, wait, wait. I've I've never heard of this machine. Can I have one for while I'm driving? Because <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like that, but for mermaid laser fights. That's how this movie. No, works. you're right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So the mermaid says, you know, those guys that you're walking around with, those are our subjects for our pagan god of the water. And you need to give them back. But the mermaids can't get them because they are soaked in the blood of Jesus Christ. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. He says, you need to leave and go back to your master Satan by the count of seven. Weird <laughs> count. Weird count to offer. I just, I, I wanted a six and a half. He never counts at all. But we're, yeah, we're all going like seven, huh? He just yeah. couldn't decide between five and ten, I guess. So I should note that this the whole time that they're having this discussion and argument and you leading up to the laser battle, sexy tank talk guy or sorry, Kyle. Kenny. God damn it. I never watched South Park. <laughs> <laughs> so Kenny's in the background and he looks like he's miming row, row, row your boat, but while weeping. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a part of it. I also I have to point out after he gives the mermaids to a count of seven. The mermaids very clearly agreed to laugh in unison, yes. but two of them don't start on time. So King Mermaid is like, ha ha ha, oh, come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. make me look like, and then they, then they stop. She looks at them and they go like, ha 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 ha. To get, it's fucking <laughs> phenomenal. And the one on the right is like totally into this. Like she's got her eyes wide. She's making the crazy faces. She, she's loving this. Yeah. yeah, she's given the best performance of all the mermaids. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, but then they have their big lightning laser battle. Pretty quickly on, they summon the Holy Ghost fire this time. This is where we start to realize that that is the finishing move, right? Yes. Yeah. So the mermaids catch on fire and disappear. And uh, everybody scream thanks Jesus in song for letting him win another magic fight. Once again. Yeah, and like we can't understand a word of what they're saying slash singing slash yelling. It, it's all distortion noise at this point. Yes, yeah, right. So, okay, and then at, at this point, you have this weird fucking thought, right, where you're like, I don't know that these mermaid laser lightning fireball battles are going to be enough to keep me interested. <laughs> but the movie realizes that. Surprise, Devil Slap! Yes, yes! The movie's like, all right, well, what if a guy just appears dressed as the devil, slaps Blue Nun, and then runs away? <laughs> and let me be very clear That's here. Amazing. He slaps this <laughs> nun. There is just, no, just smacks no her. fight choreography going on here. This nun was like, no, man, give me your best shot. And indeed he <laughs> did. This is the consensual non-consent fetish. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> right. Well, and then so, okay, then the nun, I guess, is supposed to be possessed. And we have this amazing moment where the way that she's going to show that she's possessed is she's trying to strip off her garments, right? Because she doesn't have any modesty left. And I am here for it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. So True. is the writer. So now now we get the, uh, the nun slash exhibitionism fetish. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But here's the thing. Like everyone else is supposed to stop her. But this actress obviously doesn't want to take her clothes off. And these actors don't really want to stop her. So they have this moment nope. where she keeps like lifting her skirt up and then 
dropping it and going, really, guys? Nobody? She'll start to button her, unbutton her shirt. Nobody does anything. And she'll be like, I'm they're, going they're, back. Yeah, they're all like, oh, no, please. Go. <laughs> no, oh, I'm stuck in the mud. <laughs> the full, they're going full Willy Wonka in this moment. <laughs> You're right. And by the way, don't worry. This isn't the end because she will spend the next, I'm going to go ahead and say 20 minutes of the movie yes. just roasting the movie from the inside. Oh, so great. She's she's the best character in this movie. Oh, she's amazing. Far, yeah. The possessed version is the best character in this movie. This is the moment when I ordered a nun costume from Amazon for my partner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I also just have to point out it's a tiny moment, but I do have to talk about it while they're doing the no, don't undress yourself thing. Kenny or handsome tank top man gets a bug in his mouth and <laughs> stops acting to be like, bleh, bleh, ah, 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 got a bug in my mouth. I feel like Kenny's in his own little fucking movie and I'm here for it. Right. He sure is. Yeah. We get more traffic noise at this point. Oh, yeah, for sure. As, mm -hmm. the, as they're trying to exercise the demon from the stripping nun. The cars are honking. Yes. Oh, there's so much fucking traffic noise here. Yeah. And then Paul starts scream singing. So, you know, the scene's over. So this is a note from my partner at this point. She said he sounds like Buju Banton singing the song Murderer, which he's a Jamaican singer. And that's apparently a whole genre of music. But like he's doing it, but without talent. OK. All right. I can't, I can't argue yeah. with that reference. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll let it stand. So they walk more and then the mermaids come back again. OK. But, but we've seen this bush before. Yes. Like, it's the same bush. They're just yep. walking in circles. <laughs> yep, they're just walking in circles. There, there was only a certain amount of mom's backyard they were allowed to use for their movie. <laughs> but here's, here's what I love about this scene, because podcast listener, you're thinking to yourself, Eli, aren't you bored of the movie at this point that they're having the identical conversation with the mermaids that's going to end in an identical laser battle? But what if I told you that was all happening except for one actor who's just sitting there <laughs> making fart noises like she's trying to get kicked off live TV. It's so she's, great. She starts twerking. At she's one twerking. twerking. She literally twerks. Not even exaggerating. She literally twerks yes. at Father Philip. You will she never totally convince does. me that this is not softcore nun fetish porn. <laughs> no <laughs> shot. Right. And that's happening as they're having another laser battle with the during the laser fight, <laughs> which I have to point this out. They win this laser fight, not by yelling Holy Ghost fire like they normally do. They win this one by saying, I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you send to me bounces off of me and sticks to you. Yeah. Well, so and now the mermaids came prepared for Holy Ghost fire. They, they said, you're not going to get us with fire this time. So before they disappear this time, they managed to strike red Kenny and Fitch blind with their mermaid powers. And I think I, I can't I feel like Philip changed his mind about whether he was going to be blind, right? Yes. Yeah, it's it's unclear. I don't think Philip was supposed to be blind for the scene, but I have to say, so I watched this movie three times in total. I don't know why I subjected mm. myself to that, but I did. I was going to say. But my first watch through, <laughs> I missed that they were going blind because I was so distracted by the fucking twerking nun who was right <laughs> yeah, behind No, that makes sense. No one blames you for that, Vice. So like in the next scene when they were all blind, I was like, wait a minute. When did these what guys happened? go blind? Were they blind the whole time? What is going on here? I loved Fitch too, like, cause he like apparently he doesn't know how blind works and thinks that he also lost his ability to bend his elbows. Yep, right. Mm -hmm. He's like flapping his arms. He's waving his everywhere. arms around. It's the best. It's the best. I need Tim to do this when we get together. Just start grabbing <laughs> random people. Okay, but as they walk through the scene, so like they have a bitch sleeves or F Fitch, whatever you want to call him. He's leading a blind guy behind him, and then Father mm -hmm. Philip is behind him too, who he appears to still be able to see. So this is worse than the blind leading yes, the blind. Yes, This exactly. is the blind leading the guy who can still the see. The sighted, yeah. Right. Well, it's the blind leading the blind leading the blind leading the sighted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. And I just have to point out, the end of this scene is Paul, Apostle Paul turns to them and he's like, okay, admittedly, destroying the forest of evil is not going great. <laughs> <laughs> And then he kind of half ass does the cheese. Literally, he's like, Jesus, Jesus. 
Well, and this is the next. Uh, Kenny mumbles in audibly for like two solid fucking minutes. Obviously, is putting his heart. And the subtitles say music again. Right. Yes. Yep. We can't hear a fucking word. He's obviously putting his heart into it. Afterwards, everybody's like deeply emotionally affected by whatever it is that he just said. He's the modern Shakespeare and nobody knows it. Right. right? Yeah, He's exactly. the one who wrote that line about their <laughs> roles being called in the school of fear. Everything else he wrote for himself got cut by Miles Dury or whatever the guy's name is. <laughs> what, Mike Linus, it's burned into my brain forever. I'm going to be looking yeah, that's, for him. You'll be hunting it. Yeah, you mumble his name every night before bed. So. <laughs> so now I think it's Fitch who at this point says a blind man is equivalent to a dead man. Yes, he does. Yeah, that was a what? A bit ableist in my <laughs> estimation. Just, a, just yeah. a little. You know what, guys? I'm not afraid to say it. This Nigerian movie about fighting Nigerians in a magical <laughs> forest with the power of Jesus, not quite as able-minded uh, about the handicapped as it should yeah, be. No, it really should <laughs> hold it to a higher standard, yeah. So, and, and of course, again, through this entire monologue, Blue Nun is just raspberry <laughs> shaking her ass. She's making faces at Father Philip while he's talking. Doing TikTok dances. She literally, at one point, she literally points and laughs at him. Yep. Yes. And then he says, he says, he who laughs last laughs best, which is followed by the blue nun laughing both last yes. and best. Right. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. So, yeah. And so now he's going to uh, anoint him with his tiny little bottle of mango nectar. Urine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. This is where I saw the Goya label and was really brought to a, a large amount of peace that I had to had <laughs> up to this point in the movie. I did not see the Goya label. So I'm like. I know from context that this is probably oil, but it still looks like pee. It it still looks yeah. like pee. Yep. Yeah. And at, at one point while the blue nun is raspberrying, Father Philip is actually like trying to hold her mouth shut and she's like sputtering all over his hand. And <laughs> yeah. he's, he's clearly grossed out by this. Like, I don't think that was in the script. I think this is just she hated his guts and was yeah. taking this opportunity <laughs> to like spit all over him. Yeah. No, it makes sense. So, yeah. So Philip turns to at this point, he turns to Paul, you know, and he's like, hey, man, do you, are you are you sure this is a good idea? Like, you know, we're lost at this point. We're clearly walking in circles. We've been to this part of mom's yard already. You know, <laughs> three fifths of us are blind. One fifth of us are insane. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. And Paul, Paul just looks at him. He's like, et to Philip. Yeah. Oh, he's so offended. He's so mad. Right. He's like, well, first of all, okay, we can just walk towards all that traffic noise and ask for directions if we get lost, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> no, we must not. God does not sleep. Neither does he slumber. Yeah. He's Wait, those are the same thing, aren't they? <laughs> yes. He says, he says, I want you to know that I am talking to heaven and God. And Philip does like a... Okay, well, could you tell them to do a slightly better job? Yeah, uh, right. I don't, right, know, I don't yeah. know what to tell you. <laughs> Paul's like, God is the keeper of Israel. And I'm like, that's going great for him. Yeah. <laughs> so through this whole thing, we get the blue nun basically giving a blowjob to a leaf. So this is <laughs> yep. this is the dendrophilia slash nun fetish. Oh, okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And we, we got the humiliation fetish last time with the spitting. So the, like it's all nun fetish stuff. Yeah. And she's right in between their faces too. Like I have to set up, the, if you're not watching the movie along with us, and you should absolutely watch this along with us. These two guys are having a very serious conversation about whether one of them has lost his faith in the God that leads them through the forest of evil. And she's being teabagged <laughs> by an ant in between their two faces. Yes. It's, it's very, amazing. It's very distracting. And then Paul just yells out, he touched me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, well, okay. While pointing at Father Philip. Yeah, right. So now he's going into another scream song, but the scream song is he touched me and he's literally pointing at Philip as he scream sings. Yes. It. <laughs> now, for the record, this is a real song and I know this song, but the way that he's singing the song, it makes it sound like he forgot the words and is very badly ad-libbing it. Yeah, right. And that he thought it was about a doll in a courtroom when he first heard it. Yes. That too. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, but now he's going to use his power of scream singing along with the mango nectar to unblind everybody with Jesus magic. Oh, oh! before we get there. So he uh, he picks up some dirt and he mixes some of the pee in it. Mm -hmm. And now he's yelling about how... The thing that in his hand that he just made, the mixture he just made, is a soul that God created. So I'm like, 
Is there cum in this pee jar as well? <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> interesting. Like, was it after masturbation uh, uh, piss? Yeah. Two things about rubbing the dirt in people's eyes. First of all, all of the actors are like, don't rub dirt in my eyes, man. So he has to just be like, I'm rub, 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 rub right? Yeah. And then <laughs> second, second thing is when he rubs the dirt on their eyes, <laughs> each of their <laughs> eyes gets an itty bitty CGI explosion. Oh. It's so cute. That's the absolutely the highlight of the movie is the the effects of them being unblinded by the holy uh, oil. It's, but it's it's like it's this explosion that they bought that's clearly like this nuclear blast. Yes, that's like they, this massive explosion yes. that they just shrank down and put over their eyes. Exactly, mm -hmm. and and that now that's the high point of the movie. The low point is that they also at this point cure Blue Nun of what was whatever was making her twerk. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's. But to be sad. fair, <laughs> her curing is an eight bit CGI phoenix, complete yes. with sound effects comes flying out of yes. her. I said that it looks like she gave birth to Super Nintendo Phoenix, which lets out a red tailed hawk screech. Mm -hmm. it does. Yeah. And again, I just have to point out every time I have been like, "Oh, I'm getting a little bored of this movie." Final Fantasy Phoenix flies out of the nun, and yep. I'm like, "You just you want me? I'm dragging right. me right back okay. in." Okay, and, and listeners, we cannot possibly do this justice. You really have to watch the movie to recognize that Eli's not in any way exaggerating by no. you know eight bit. Well, it's probably sixteen bit, right? Well, well I'll give him that. Okay, which is yeah. probably a sixteen bit Phoenix. That's the only exaggeration there. We almost got to N sixty four graphics. Almost, yeah. Let's not get crazy. So. There's also this interesting bit where all the sh they're still shouting, but the sound cuts out and you have to wonder if they just broke the microphone and had to wait until they could get a new one. <laughs> I became a Christian momentarily and was like, thank God. There yeah, is a right. God. He cut the audio finally. Yeah. So, but they leave that. Everybody's unblinded again. So they get attacked by the mermaids again. The same again. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> mm hmm. And every time the mermaids show up, sexy tank top guy just yells Jesus and like jumps and runs to the back of the group. But he, he's not like Jesus protect me sort of thing. It's just like, oh, Jesus Christ, that scared me. Like it, yeah. it, he yells it as a swear word. <laughs> yeah. And you, you may be wondering who exactly these mermaids are at this point. Well, good news. They actually tell us. And this is the best that the automated captions or myself could do with what that information quote we are the great daughters of grace or simile, end quote. Yes. That's <laughs> <Yes. laughs> the best we got, guys. Sorry. But yeah, they're like, you're not going to get us with our, your Holy Ghost fire this time. So he calls upon a, uh, Philip calls upon a thunderstorm. The mermaids run up on him. They do a fireball and then they disappear again. Yes. And, and Paul sings about how lucky they are. It's, you're lucky you disappeared. And he does that for a bit is, is the scene again. So <clears throat> they walk some more. And so for this scene, I put in my notes, uh, holy shit, there's like three trees in this one scene. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, this is the part. This, this was the, the deep part of the forest. This, this is the forest part of the forest. Yeah. <laughs> so but Paul stops. He says, hold on a second. The Holy Ghost just told me that you, Red, have had the MacGuffin this whole damn time. Which is a bottle of water. And they were start, they were dying of thirst in a couple scenes ago. Yes. Yeah. Right. But this is a bottle of water that they stole from the sacred river where the mermaids live. And it's water that would give you eternal life or somehow bring your ba your land back from uh, destruction or something. It, like, they don't get really specific, but it's magical water. Yeah. 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 But the light and the darkness have nothing in common at all. So obviously you need to dump out your water. Yeah. Well, you don't need to dump it out so much as just leave the bottle sitting by the side of the path. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. I also love that these actors did not decide what the water of life was before the scene. <laughs> so they're just like, what the water? Well, if you get rid of it, then undisclosed we'll bad thing will happen. No, I know. Undisclosed bad great. thing will happen. Okay. <laughs> Let's leave the downy bottle. Yeah. So he goes to set down the bottle. Now, the, there's a big fight on Team Fabric Software about whether to do that, right? Like, Fitch is not ready to let the bottle go. But White Shirt has some really interesting things to mumble. And, yeah, so Bitch Sleeves and Kenny cuddle again. Mm -hmm. 
And th this, is, this is where I wrote, religion. It makes perfect sense to discard the only water you have while you were lost in the wilderness because the voices <laughs> in my head told me we'd be okay. Yeah, no, that's exactly what fucking happened. And then, so yeah, the, ultimately though, Red is won over by the argument that White Shirt makes, which we can actually hear for the first time. He's like, hey, you know, if we stopped carrying that, we wouldn't be attacked by mermaids every other scene, uh, which would be nice. And so Red gives Paul the bottle of fabric softener, which again, he doesn't dump out. He just sets the haunted fucking fabric softer bottle down. Yeah. Is all. All right. Well, the crew just left what I believe to be a cursed bottle of immortality shit sitting by the side of the path. So quick while you think that a plot point may have just been introduced, we're going to pause for another break. <laughs> but first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will they walk more? Will they win magic fights with Holy Ghost Fire more? Will they scream sing afterwards more? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the walking Holy Ghost fire and scream singing conclusion of Battle of the Spirit and Power of God. And I said, Jesus, Jesus, you are so awesome. Hey, Craig. And I said, Craig. Uh, uh, hey, 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 Dave. Hey, what's up? So uh, we've been wandering this evil forest for a while now. Mm hmm. And, you know, every so often those mermaids appear and, you know, we have like this little laser battle with them. Laser, laser battle. Yeah. Well, I can't help but notice that the Bible that you gave me doesn't shoot lasers. So I kind of have to yell fire, fire, fire and throw fireballs. Yeah. Yeah. You're the fireball guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I was just wondering if we could, um, you know, switch. Mm, I don't know. Dave, what if you what if you can't? Can't what? But you can't laser Bible, obviously. I can laser Bible. I'm just, I'm just saying it takes pretty strong faith, and you've seemed a little eh. I I am not a little eh. Wait, come on. When the nuns wanted to go home, you offered to walk them there. I was being polite. You were being home in time for dinner, is what you were being. You're just mad because the devil strangled you this morning and nobody noticed or cared. And now you're hogging the laser Bible. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. The guy who's been holding the magic oil like a binky wants to talk about hogging. <laughs> Give us the water of no, life. No, mermaids. OK, I'll come back later. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with more walking. You know, walk some more. Dun, dun, da, da, da. They, they do ba, some ba, Latin ba, prayers. Ba, They've ba. run out of English language shit to yell. So now they're doing Latin prayers. Paul has another song for us. Mm -hmm. There's more credits. Yep, yeah. And then Bitch Sleeves gets uh, kidnapped by a tree. A tree. Yeah, that's the yeah. next thing that happened. So here's the thing, though. Given I, I put way more thought into this movie than the uh, than the writer of this movie did. You sure did, man. You saw it more times than the writer of this movie. <laughs> I, probably. Given how much walking there is in this movie, I thought that him disappearing into the tree was like an homage to Tolkien when Merry and Pippin get eaten by old man Willow. Okay. All right. But like, honestly, these people probably think that fantasy books are like of the devil, so should be burned. Yeah. I yeah. Was, I was going to say, I don't think. I'm probably desperately looking for some hint of competence. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but no, but Fitch leans against the tree that the only tree we've seen, like whatever, the fourth tree we've seen in this forest. <laughs> he leans against the tree and he disappears and everybody's like, oh, shit. And they're like, they spring into action. Right. Philip has his little holy water mister. So he's like bad tree, bad tree. If you spritz the tree with urine, you get your friend back. I, yeah, I guess. Exactly. Well, you also have to have Paul scream praying the whole time, right? Of course. Jonah was swallowed by the shark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He calls it a shark. Right. He does call it a shark. And the yeah. subtitle said it was Jonah was swallowed by the soccer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay. All right. I had no idea what he would what he had actually said there. So I was going to withhold comment. But yeah, so but they ultimately they get the tree gives Fitch back. He's like, I was just playing shit. Fuck. <laughs> and then Paul's like, all right, guys, we got to get moving. We have uh, four more fights with the mermaids to have. We're going to four, four yep. more my <laughs> scheduled. Well, actually, we have no more fights with the mermaids. We have more <laughs> fights. But at this point, we, we then cut to the mermaids. They bamf into existence over where they left the fabric softener bottle. They reclaim it. 
They cackle. They do the unison cackle much better this time. They right? nailed it, it in this second scene. Been yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they welcome the water back to their marine spirit world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, like, is this is this sentient spirit water? Apparently, yeah. that's the way they treat it. Yeah. I really wanted to, to flash cut to them just doing their laundry under the water. Just like, finally, am I right? I know. Is that a clean <laughs> I know. <laughs> so much static cling in my clamshells. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so, but they cackle. We we go back to a little bit of walking. Uh, it's so fucking funny because they just the filmmaker felt like they couldn't just go straight from mermaid to mermaid. So we just check back in with the gang. They walk through a scene and then we go back to the mermaids. Okay, no, no, we we have to dwell on the scene for a second because it's, they don't just walk through the scene. They walk through it. Bitch guy lets out a massive yawn while he is like front yes. and center in the shot. Like a yes. massive, he doesn't even try to stifle it. And then following up, like coming up the rear, <laughs> Father Philip is like taking two steps, stopping, crossing himself, yep. taking another two steps, stopping and crossing himself. And it's so silly that I, I'm sure that this is what I heard. You actually hear the cameraman stifle a laugh as he's filming <laughs> Father Philip, like taking two steps and crossing himself and stopping. It's like that seems it's, a, it's hilarious. If you watch one scene from this movie, aside from the devil choking out the guy at the beginning, because that's the best scene. But if you watch one other scene from this movie, this is the one to do because it's, it's no, fucking hilarious. Uh, no, you no. should watch the Phoenix come yes, out of the Yes, thank nun. you. Because that has yeah. the explosion. Just watch the whole movie. Just watch yeah, the whole really. movie. Just yeah, absolutely, absolutely watch the whole movie. 100%. Don't watch it with sound, though. You don't need the sound. No, you know. Every time you think to yourself, I don't know if I should have listened into the. Oh, wait, never mind. That it's that's the <laughs> that's the pace of the film. So, yeah. So so then the mermaids, we really get the best effects of the of the movie in this scene. Right. Because the mermaids appear now by their river, but not just regular appear. Right. They burst <laughs> out of the earth in these weird little hexes. Oh, it's this, amazing. we have upgraded a Nintendo 64 shit here. Yeah. They explode into the scene. Exactly. Yeah, I thought they were going to like no clip through a door they shouldn't be able to get through. <laughs> <laughs> They're speed running their own movie somehow. Right, right, yeah. But then they and then they they do another synchronized cackle and they're flooded by a big tidal wave. Looks very realistic. It's a really good effect. <laughs> would we say they were flooded by it, or would we say there was a very obviously a layer in front of them in After Effects? <laughs> you, you wanted a layer and a feather, and they did it for you, Vice. They did, they did it for not you. Feather this layer. They did not feather this layer. <laughs> no, they did not. So, but now, but that's that mermaid storyline is now buttoned up. Yep, yep, it's done. We never see them again. We're done with that. Never again. So we cut back to the main characters, and this time they're attacked by piss nun Mary, who is the other nun, Stripes, and Satan. Yep. Satan. The choking Satan from the beginning. And Kenny once again yells out, Ah, oh, Jesus, and runs to the back of the group. <laughs> he does, yes. Mm-hmm. And they, they have a lightning firefight. It's identical, but the only thing I want to point out about this is they seem to unleash a cast member the movie didn't know about by accident in this yes. scene. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, they like lightning blue nun, right? And uh, yeah. a little blonde, I think it was a child, a child in a blonde wig comes running out of her and all the actors stop and go, who the fuck what was the that? Fuck that was- wasn't a person that's been in the movie. <laughs> now, I have to point out during this scene, as they're all fighting with the, the demons and nuns and shit, bitch sleeves once again, lets out a massive yawn while he's hiding behind Father Paul. Oh, Jesse, he's like, oh, this is a kind of a boring laser fight here. <laughs> this time he tries to cover his mouth with his hand, but he fails, and it's just this massive yawn. Amazing. So yeah, so, they, so Paul blocks the Satan lightning, he uses his holy ghost fire. Satan realizes things aren't going his way, so he dips the fuck out and just leaves the nuns to finish the job. He's like, you guys clean this up. I'm, I, got the, I got shit. I got a two o'clock. So he leaves, right? And now all of the the Temple of Doom bad guys from the very beginning of the movie, like, I guess, unpossessed the nuns. We find out that they're the ones that were making the nuns be bad the whole time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they all leap out. That's where that little blonde girl came from. The girl in the blonde wig, Eli. She was with the Temple of Doom bad guys from the beginning. Uh, okay, never mind. This movie makes sense. This is a great movie. Yeah, no, it all adds up. It all adds up. <laughs> now, at this point, though, Father Paul is yelling at the nuns to, like, accept Jesus again. But, like, he doesn't just yell at them to accept Jesus. 
He tells them to get on their knees, and while Father Philip is still doing jerk-off motions in front of their faces, he tells them to open their mouths to receive the Lord. Yes, yep. he does. What? Mm-hmm. In a sign of submission. This is nun porn. That's what it is. <laughs> And the hoodlums who had to do it earlier give them a look like, no, you made us get on our knees for the other scene. You guys have to do it. Come on. <laughs> yeah, right. Can't right. just be us. So, okay. So the gang walks to another part of the treeless forest. This is where the movie is going to end. We're going to get like a 17 minute scene in this fucking <laughs> clearing to end this out. Fitch is like, hey, guys, I remember this place. And they're like, really? Do you? And he's like, yeah, this is the place where we started the... um." movie. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I remember this place too. It's the same place you filmed about 30% of the scenes. Yeah, right. Right. I wrote in my notes, you're not allowed to acknowledge you've been wandering around the same patch of brush for the entire movie. That's my job. (laughs) Stay in your lane, film. But just then Satan shows up and tells them that none of them shall leave the forest alive. Spoiler alert, he's wrong. They they do. Aha, joke's on you. None of us were in a forest to begin with. (laughs) (laughs) And credit where credit is due, I almost went with best, best powering up because the (laughs) devil needs to power up for their fight. And the way they decide to show this is two of the Temple of Doom actors run in and hug him. And he's like, yes, as though he's been filled with their power. At this point, we get a shot from behind the devil man. And I just put in my notes, dude needs to wear a slip under his devil costume because when the light's behind him like that, we can see everything. We really can. We get that pretty good luck. But yeah, but he's absorbing the Temple of Doom bad guys one by one to power up his ultimate yeah. Satan attack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the demons are possessing the devil to give him more power like a Megazord. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. A satanic Megazord. And however bad you're picturing the special effects, I promise you, podcast listener, I promise you, It's worse. It (laughs) is worse than what you're picturing. So much worse. And at this point, the lightning sound effect is clipping. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Right. How the hell do you even do that? So, yeah, so we we get thunder after thunder after thunder after thunder. And then he shoots his, you know, like all the way juiced up to 11 Satan lightning. Even Paul's Bible can't handle that. Oh, no. Oh, but don't worry about it because Philip's got the big guns. He's bringing out the spritzing the devil with urine, which explodes when it hits him. Yeah, he does. He has explosive uh, spritz urine. Kenny, sexy tank top guy, runs away at Charlie Chaplin speeds. <laughs> yes, they sped up the film of him running away. Yeah, it just needed that drum roll thing that is in all the old cartoons. like the. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then... With the suddenness that demanded all of us go back 10 seconds at least once. <laughs> I was 100% sure I fell asleep. And I, I was no idea what they <laughs> Yeah. We're suddenly in a different scene where a character we've never met comes up to a holy man that we've never met to tell him that a village we've never seen is on fire and that the only thing that can save the village is if this holy man gives him the money we've never heard of that he apparently owes him. Yes. yes. And the holy man is like, the money is in the bank of the spirit? I guess. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. Did neither of you guys notice that he had a carpet with the Star of David draped behind him? I did note I, I did notice that. I did yep, take yep, very yep. strong notice of that. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, Leave my shrine. Leave my shrine. Yeah. Well, but I, I mean, you you say then as though there wasn't like three minutes of occasionally English yelling way too loud for the microphone in between those two things. But yeah. So this this was the point where I looked up. I'm like, am I like, are they still speaking English? What language are they speaking now? So like, what languages do they speak in Nigeria? And it's like, there's there's like six languages. So I guess he's just slipping in and in between English and one of the other languages that they yes. speak in Nigeria. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I am willing to bet that even if we all spoke that language fluently, we would still have no idea what the fuck he was saying because of the audio. <laughs> but yeah, right. He does at one point say, I hate people that are myopic because this movie really hates people with less than perfect vision. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I just loved the idea that like 
We've been spending this whole movie tr very clearly being like, hey, let's not like make fun of the accents, right? It's the sound, it's the mics. And then these actors, as if just to fuck were, with us, were like, <laughs> hey, do you want to speak Nigerian so that three white guys making a podcast feel uncomfortable and aren't sure if <laughs> it's just English they don't understand? <laughs> this is why I Googled it, because my partner was like, oh, maybe he's speaking Nigerian. And I'm like, I don't think Nigerian is actually a language. So I looked it up and it's not. There's like six languages they speak in Nigeria none of which are Nigerian. We're all sitting there being like, ah, he sounds, whatever it is, it sounds lovely. I don't want to make a <laughs> judgment. Either so, way, it could be Nigerian. Nigerian is like not a language. Okay, cool. Well, I, it should be. I've always said that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but then we, we cut away from that scene. We will resolve it. Don't worry. It's not there for no reason at all. That would be insane. Will we resolve it? Obviously, yeah. Are you sure about that? <laughs> it was sort of. Did you see a scene that I didn't? Uh, yes, yeah, no, no, we I'll, did. I'll, I'll, I'll clue you in. I'll clue you in. You, you missed it. That's Pay okay. attention. Pay attention. It happened really fast. Does it, have, does it have anything to do with the fact that the devil is played by the same actor as the guy in the in the shrine? Yeah, we don't talk about Ooh. the devil being played by the same actress. As the <laughs> so, oh, okay. So meanwhile, the gang is still fighting Satan. Paul apparently has unlimited fireballs, which seems a little OP to me. I just I feel like he should have to earn those or something. You yeah. know he used the duping glitch earlier. Well, no, but he he did at this point have to steal the bottle of urine that was being held up by Father Philip's apparently lifeless corpse. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Philip has fallen in battle now. Yeah, but eventually he does defeat him by throwing the anointed piss at him, and Satan disappears. Fitch and and tank top come back in and they're like well i was just about to jump in the fight and help you guys what happened did you guys already finish it okay so when the devil disappears i don't know if you guys noticed it but fitch was in the background and as the devil disappeared he appeared out of nowhere so he i did, was convinced yes. i was convinced at this point that like oh shit fitch is possessed by a demon and he and they don't know it yet so he's like gonna sneak attack them and that's gonna be the the climax of the movie but no it was just continuity error no they just they just <laughs> paused the camera and asked that guy to leave and then they oh, started you're the right camera that's and exactly fitch was standing. what happened oh my god this movie is so awful but now everyone needs to sit there screaming about the fact that philip died okay at this point, the clipping is so bad that the auto-generated subtitles heard the crackling noise of their microphones and were like, this is applause, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, yes. At this point, because they sit there wailing. We're not going to expose you to it, podcast listener, but they sit there wailing for genuinely like three to five minutes. Eli, it's six, it's six minutes. Yes. This is when we get our next writer exploring his nun fetish moment as the blue nun tries to get Philip to rise again by grabbing his crotch and shaking it and like trying to give him a hand job to wake him up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a rough one. It's a rough one. But at this point, I was so, it was so unlistenable that I just wrote in my notes, Vice was like, oh, let's do GAM together. And I was like, here, listen to 90 minutes of people screaming into a mic that can't handle it. Yeah, okay. So a little behind the scenes note here. I was invited to join you guys for GAM more than a year ago when you did your Toronto live show when I we first met up. Don't. This so is... I, have been, I have been waiting over a year to watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to say, it was actually worth the wait. It was worth yeah, it. Really was this was amazing. You got, a, you got a 16 bit Phoenix in your movie, right? <laughs> Nobody else got that. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but now the fight ends. Philip, though, has fallen in battle and everybody's going to scream, weep over his corpse for six whole fucking minutes. Now, during this time, there will be three different nuns screaming too loud for the microphone to handle. Paul will be like alternately scream singing and scream praying too loud for the microphone to handle. And that same goddamn opera aria that's been playing in the entire <laughs> fucking movie will also, also be in the background playing, yes. for six minutes. Yes. The only way I can describe it is if anyone listening to this has ever fallen into a bad acid trip, that's what the sound of <laughs> yes. this is. That moment where you go like, oh, it's going to be a bad six hours. That's what this movie sounds like. Yes. So... A literal six minutes later, though, they're all like, all right, well, I guess this scene is over. We'll have to leave. But just then, Philip comes back to life. Well, he convulses back to life. Well, yeah, he convulses back to life. So then they're going to scream, sing a different, more celebratory <laughs> okay. song. Okay. 
I have a theory and I want to, I want your guys' take on this. I think that they were like, you're supposed to come back to life. And the actor was really milking it. So they were like, well, I guess he's not coming back to life and the scene is over. And Philip was like, no, I'm here. I'm here now. Sorry. <laughs> I, I had a four part joke and you only laughed at the first three parts. So I was waiting. To see. <laughs> all right. So then we're going to cut to all the characters we know. And then some singing under a big tree. Yeah. We have a guy there that's keeping time like Eli. Right. The, those <laughs> random claps that keep showing up in the song. I wrote in my notes. OK, so not all black people have rhythm. OK, this is good. <laughs> dispelling stereotypes here in this film. So my my partner grew up attending a Southern Baptist style church in the Caribbean. And she said that, like, the singing moments in this movie actually gave her a touch of nostalgia. So she's now been wandering around the house for a while, alternating between singing songs from this movie that she recognized and yelling, Holy Ghost Fire! while mom <laughs> miming the throwing of the Dukins. But Fantastic. has she been clipping, though? Has she just has exactly. she started <laughs> clipping like she did in her youth? Clipping in my ears. <laughs> Importantly, though, after you yell Holy Ghost Fire, you have to do the Aaron Horn noise. Like that. Yeah, right. And you also have to do like a hook shot motion. There's a hook shot motion that goes with it. Watch the movie to get it exactly right. Yeah. So, okay. So, but they're all singing under this tree. The, the one guy runs in late. He's like, am I too late to be in the scene? And they're like, no, man, just run in. It's, it won't be distracting at all. Yeah, you know, that's yellow shirt guy. No, I, that's, that's a kid. I think that's just someone's kid that was in yeah. the movie. And he just like ran up behind him. He's like, dad, can we go home? Yeah, right. We're literally on camera right now. Now you have to stay. I don't want to see. Well, you have to. He crosses his arms and he's like all like grumpy about it. And like, I'm How did, yeah. stay in the background yeah. of your movie. <laughs> There's a baby crying just off camera. At one yeah, point. yeah, it's great. But the guy who ran up to the holy man earlier to demand the money to get the village to not be on fire, he's there. So after the song ends and, and Paul preaches a little bit, he thanks them all for saving the day by saving yes. the forest. Yes. And he goes, also, thank you to everyone that died. And Paul has to go, actually, we, we brought everyone Back yeah, no, nobody dead. died. He's like, no, the first lady that died stayed dead. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, you're Paul right. doesn't know that. Paul corrects him. Paul's like, no, yeah. don't worry, we brought him back. <laughs> but also, they they are standing they are standing under what is the fifth tree in the movie. But this is when they're not supposed to be in the forest anymore, and it's a bigger tree than any of the ones that were in the it forest. It is. It is yeah. by far the most impressive tree that we see. Yeah. I also I just have to point out that Paul, as he's doing the like thank you for the thank you, he's doing like the bridesmaid who didn't get to give a speech, <laughs> giving an impromptu speech thing. He's like, oh, thank you, very kind words, kind words. Indeed, you know, this morning. <laughs> and he, at some point during this, he tells Father Philip to open his Bible to Romans 10. And we watch as he like opens his Bible, which was clearly not bookmarked and like struggles through finding where Romans was. And at one point, he like turns, Testament, turns back to Paul. Right? And he's like, it was Romans chapter 10. I'm like, yeah, Romans 10. Okay. Yeah, Romans, okay. Sorry, yeah, it's exactly. We watch book. all of that. And by the way, the, that part of the Bible is just meaningless gobbledygook that just says be Christian at the end, right? So it yeah, was a yeah. complete waste any fucking time. And it, we we get a close up pan of some of the uh, people that are watching the scene at this at this point. And um, bitch sleeves is actually asleep. He's just sitting there with his arms crossed and his eyes closed, just <laughs> yes. taking a nap. So like, <laughs> yes. I've been hold, I've been holding back yawns this whole time. Like a couple of them made it into the movie, so I'm just gonna sit here and take a nap. Yeah, right, right. And. I have to talk about my favorite moment of this scene is that he has him turn to Romans and he's preaching or something. He's yelled, singing about Jesus. And this is when Paul requested that if you're wearing a hat, take it off. But if you're a lady and you're not wearing a hat, put one on. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. But as crazy as that is, he follows it up with, if you don't have anything to cover your head with, that's okay. God understands. <laughs> so if, if it doesn't matter, then why are you telling him to do it? Right. Right. Yeah. Also, why not just get a hat from one of the guys wearing a hat? I feel like we, I feel like we can solve this problem fairly easy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So everybody has to change their headgear situation. And at one point, at one point, Bitch Sleeves actually wakes up and he like gives a bit of a speech, but we don't know what he's saying because apparently he took acting coaching from Kenny earlier. Yes. Right. 
Right. Yeah. That's the other guy, the guy in the red hat. Well, like he tries to give a monologue, but he keeps turning back and forth from the microphone. So we only hear half of it. It's great. Amazing work with the uh, by, by Mike Linus here. Yeah, I would have paid them to take my name out of the credits. Amen, brother. So but but Paul has them all repeat the special Jesus words and all the characters, even the ones that have already become Christian with us watching become Christian. They were all just singing a Christian hymn at the beginning of the scene. <laughs> They're all already Christian. Right. They yeah. know the words. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but everybody's real super happy because they're all Christian. And I'm like, boy, I wonder how this scene will end. I wonder if it'll have anything to do with scream singing. And then they start scream singing. And then they scream sing us into the end of the YouTube video. <laughs> yes. Yes. Scream sing to the credits. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I like Vice Rhino can't thank you enough for suffering through one of the least eventful but still most entertaining films in the history of our podcast it was my pleasure slash pain and uh, if our listeners wanted to hear more from you wait, remind them where they should go on youtube i'm just vice rhino you can go to uh, links.vicerhino.com has all my stuff i just started a uh, a podcast with my partner where she is reading christian relationship books to me and then we kind of roast them oh nice so that's that's kind of fun as well oh sequel episode <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, links.vicerhino.com is where you find all my main stuff. All right. And of course, we'll have that linked in the show notes for this episode as well. Vice Rhino, thanks again. And while that's going to do it for our review of Battle of the Spirit and Power of God, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure ourselves back into this same trap for next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, as you know, next week's episode is the beginning of July. And you know what that means. <gasps> That's right, baby. It's back. It's Mormon Movie Month. Oh, I'm not going to be here for Mormon Movie Month. Oh. oh, yeah. We'll be watching the much requested Con Men Gonna Con 2021 film, Witnesses. Oh, awesome. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 410 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Feist Rhino for helping out today and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that helped make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alien, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Scapicrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick and Google Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder to earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. The writer went on to discover his balloon fetish and wrote a sequel where the heroes have to fight evil spirits at a carnival. <laughs> Sister Mary eventually did get to take that piss. Yeah, she did. Nobody ever told Bitch Sleeves what his shirt said in English. <laughs> 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 almost panicked on the five but i didn't honestly that was the scariest part of this whole process for me because i've heard so many outtakes of people screwing it up yeah there you no, go. right yeah exactly. no, we'll shame you if you get it wrong yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. welcome back to the gam cast where each week we sample another selection <laughs> i love so when we have a new guest i like to fuck up the very first line so that they right feel get it loosey goosey make mm -hmm. them feel comfortable I, I, I want to put my money where my mouth do. is in terms of you can go back and get a line if you miss it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, um, so, no, just before we get going, I, ironically, I was just telling Eli this. I was looking at my waveform for the last couple of recordings for this. Um, I think I've been clipping through this whole thing. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I do have a backup recording going that I'm pretty sure I have not been clipping on but i just i just think it's hilarious for this. that that would be exactly. really fucking funny if your audio is shit through the whole thing the i think patreon <laughs> version you're just clipping the whole time yeah i i feel like it on on um 
I, I feel like Morgan can probably handle a bit of clipping on his end because most stuff, if you clip a little bit, it's still oh. recoverable. But it uh, is it is nowhere near as bad as the movie that we watched. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> good. <laughs> I should hope not. Are you Miles Lure or whatever his name is? You Linus. have to tell us. It's like being a cop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been going by Vice Rhino. He's been running away from this <laughs> from, track record from his work on time. that Nollywood yeah. Christian film. <laughs> And it's finally caught up to him. My, my whole YouTube career is just me saying, see, I can do audio. I see. <laughs> told you. I told you. Use the equipment. That you have. <laughs> All right. There we go. <laughs> I, I also don't know what a Swifty is. I don't either. I also don't know what a Swifty is. I didn't Google it. So that I wanted to my thing to I've be. learned my lesson about uh, Googling what is a, uh, when, it, when yeah. I first learned about something through Eli's sketches. <laughs> uh, Holy Ghost fire! <laughs> I, um, I, I don't know if you want to use this in the actual main body of the podcast, but I do have a recorded on my sampler my partner doing the Holy Ghost fire thing combined with the air horn noises and a uh, <laughs> phenomenal. I'll tell you what. I'll send it to me afterwards with your audio, with the rest of your audio. I'm sure we're gonna find a need for it. Somewhere. We'll find a place. <laughs> you got to be careful though. If I like a sound effect, right? Yeah. It could be the replacement for flies. Like, is your partner ready <laughs> to have several websites dedicated she, to she their would doctoral love that. thesis? I, yeah, I could just play it for you right now. Here. Holy Ghost fire! Holy Ghost fire! Holy Ghost fire! Blah 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 blah. Bra, bra, bra. I think we should play that every time jo Heath makes a joke that doesn't land from now on. <laughs> In, instead of the weird, tense silence that follows, I'm just going to have a soundboard that plays that. <laughs> and for the record, she gets to do the accent because she is black. Oh. Nice. Good. That was you, my one worry resolved. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights.